Hello, I'm Evan Brand. I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. I run a functional medicine practice online where I've seen thousands of people across the globe dealing with health conditions that other practitioners simply can't fix. Today, we're diving into the connection. It gets a little geeky, so let's have some fun. We're talking mold, gut, and brain, how all these issues are connected and how mold exposure, even from your childhood, could be driving your current health conditions today. I've run thousands of labs using urine. We can measure mycotoxins. These are the airborne compounds that get spit off of mold, which grows in a water damaged building. My story was when I was a young kid, I remember hanging out in my grandmother's basement. Her basement had flooded when I was a kid. She had carpet down there. She had wood paneling on the walls, your typical 1970s house and it took weeks for that to dry out. She did not use a professional mold remediation company. She simply used fans and that thing took forever to dry. Therefore, every time I was down in that basement, I would feel anxious or depressed. I would have cold hands and cold feet, these circulatory issues. I would feel kind of spacey, almost like a mild dizziness. But as a kid, it's hard to verbalize those feelings. Now, 20, 30 years later, I was able to get some data and measure these mycotoxins in my body and directly correlate those to my symptoms. After going through detox protocols for the last several years, I've been able to eradicate these toxins in my body and I feel much, much better. But when you look at skin problems, hormone deficiencies such as males low in testosterone in their 20s, erectile dysfunction in men in their 30s, 40s, and beyond, these issues can be linked to mold toxicity and I'm about to show you how and why. So the first thing we do is we look at the gut and there's a specific marker called beta-glucuronidase. We're just gonna do B G-U-L-C for short. Beta-glucuronidase is tested on the stool. We send this stool sample back to a lab in Georgia. And if we have elevated beta-glucuronidase, what's gonna happen is you're actually going to recirculate your toxins. So I'll just draw a little arrow going into itself. All of your toxins, including mold, pesticides, and even hormones, they get excreted out of the body through a process called conjugation. Okay, so conjugation is how we wrap up our hormones and our toxins and escort those out of the body like a straitjacket. But when you have elevated beta-glucuronidase, this is an enzyme, it impairs this whole process. And this can happen to gut dysbiosis or due to gut dysbiosis, meaning if you have parasites, if you have bacteria of any kind. You could call this SIBO if you'd like. A lot of people refer to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth as the end-all be-all solution to your gut problems, but you can have other things outside of SIBO. You can have parasites, you can even have candida, and all these infections are going to drive up beta-glucuronidase, therefore screwing up this conjugation process, therefore allowing you to recirculate mold. Okay, so stay with me. Part two of this whole issue is when we have mycotoxins plus colonization. And we can find that out by using an organic acids test. We'll call it an OAT for short. Now organic acids is a urine sample. We measure it and we send it back to the lab and they'll tell us specifically what type of mold you may have growing in your body. So if your immune system was weak or if you were living in mold for potentially years or your mother was living in mold when you were in her belly, um, we've had babies, six month old, 11 month old babies. They're already colonized from an early age, meaning we're seeing these fungal metabolites elevated in the urine. Now, those internal molds produce mycotoxins, okay? This is crazy, but what I'm telling you here is that even if you're out of that moldy environment, you're taking the mold with you because you're colonized in your gut and probably your sinus cavity as well. And so what we have to do is we have to use herbal antifungals to fix this colonization, and we use binders to get the mycotoxins out of the body. Now, how does this connect to the brain? Well the neurotransmitters are massively affected. So what I'm trying to do for you now is just paint this whole picture, okay? Stay with me. I want to paint the whole picture, this puzzle that most doctors miss. So if you go to the neurologist for your neuro symptoms, like your vertigo, your dizziness, your anxiety, your depression, this, all these weird cognitive and neuropsychiatric symptoms, maybe psychiatrists put you on an antidepressant, antipsychotic medication, something like that. I hear this all too common, so this is the truth. But they're missing the boat. Now here's what happens. So mold is gonna reduce dopamine. We know that, it's in the literature. And it's gonna reduce serotonin as well. We've seen this on organic acids testing. We have a whole section about neurotransmitter metabolites. And I can't help but smile because I love this. It's life 
transformational to see low dopamine, low serotonin that we use specific amino acids to rebuild the brain chemistry. Okay, so how does this all connect? Okay, so now we've got the brain connected to the mold. We've got the mold connected to the gut. Actually, we need to do a little better on that. So, so number four, what is happening is mold is promoting an increase in, we'll just call it bad bugs. That's the easiest way to put it to you. Specifically, an infection called clostridia. If you are a nurse, doctor watching this, you're probably familiar with C. diff, Clostridia difficile. It's a very antibiotic resistant bacteria that kills many, many people in healthcare facilities is typically where you get exposed to it. There's literature now showing that mold exposure is driving Clostridia infections, meaning if you've had this mold exposure from years ago, you're gonna have more bad bugs in your gut. Remember, those bad bugs screw up beta-glucuronidase, now you can't detox as well, your hormones are messed up, your toxicity levels continue to rise, maybe you're colonized as well, so now this is reducing your dopamine, reducing your serotonin. So all this can manifest as anxiety, depression, chronic fatigue, skin issues, low testosterone, low libido, low energy, just in general, just no zest for life. You're also gonna have potentially vertigo, dizziness, weird symptoms you can't describe. Some people describe tingling, pins and needles. They feel like warm water is being poured on their brain. Maybe you have reactivity to chemicals. You're reacting to perfumes and fragrances and car exhaust and cigarette smoke and air fresheners and all the things. This is chemical sensitivity triggered by this whole thing. So if you go to a practitioner, let's say they're a naturopath, they're just treating you for SIBO. Does it look like it's gonna fix your issues? No you have to make sure you fix everything else. If you're colonized, if you have mycotoxins, if you have low neurotransmitters, if you have any mold in your environment, all these factors, and I know this can sound a little overwhelming, but all these factors have to be addressed. And this is why I've been able to get such amazing results in my functional medicine practice, even after people have been to five, 10, 15, 20 different hospitals and prestigious clinics and prestigious doctors with so many letters after their name, more than the letters I have after my name, and they left disappointed and typically their pocketbooks were empty. They've spent 10 to 100 plus thousand dollars to run all these labs and to get all this data, you're spending maybe 1500 bucks US. Now, if you're watching this in five years, I can't guarantee what's happening with inflation, deflation, so uh, don't hold me to it. But we'll always try to give you the best pricing we can on these functional medicine labs so that you can get to the bottom of your health struggles and also help your family. As I mentioned earlier, we see young children less than one year old that have this issue already brewing where there's brain chemistry problems. The children are just completely fussy and colicky and the little gripe water and those band-aids the pediatrician recommends are not cutting it. Then they're developing skin problems. They're into early childhood childhood, having reading difficulties. They get diagnoses like being on the autism spectrum. They start to fall behind. They have issues with potty training. They have issues with nighttime urination in the bed. They have issues with separation anxiety. They have trouble reading. All this is related. So let's get your kids looked at as well and we'll be able to turn their life around that way they don't have to wait till an adult like I did to get myself better. This is Evan Brand signing out. If you'd like more info, you wanna dive into specific protocols, you wanna look at case studies, check out betterbellycourse.com. We'll have the link below as well. I have over 1,400 students in this course around the world, health seekers, yoga teachers, stay-at-home moms, parents, practitioners of all kinds, naturopaths, GI doctors, and even the medical doctors who take my program say, why didn't they teach me this stuff in medical school? So I'd love the opportunity to help you and have you as a student. And then as always, if you need help clinically, evanbrand.com is the main website and auraroots.com. That is our professional supplement line where I've created and formulated several things to help with parasites, to help with bacteria, to kill mold colonization, to detox mycotoxins, to boost neurotransmitters, and much, much more. So I'd love the opportunity to help you in that way as well. And there are some free protocols you can download on the website as well. So take good care. I'll see you in the next one.